Good morning friends. Today we are here with a new topic that is k-means. It's uh, in the initial machine learning PPT or the video we had discussed about the supervised and the unsupervised learning and the further classification as the one of them was clustering techniques. So one of the algorithm for the clustering is the k-means. We will try to solve k-means with the normal mathematics that is by pen and paper and then we'll solve it through Python. But let's first understand how this algorithm works. Firstly, you should know what is clustering. Let's see the definition of clustering. Clustering is dividing the data points into homogeneous classes or clusters. Now, for example, you are seeing a population and half of the population is happy and half of the population is sad. So you can divide the whole population into two clusters. One is the happy and other is the sad. Again, I can say you can see few people happy, few people sad and few people angry. So you can have three clusters here. So you by just seeing what type of feature they are having, we can divide them into clusters. There are two diagrams or two images in my PPT. The first image you can see, I have divided my points into three type of clusters, one, two and three, which is represented by three different colors. And now, for example, I'm having a new data point, which lies in one of the clusters. So we can predict that my new data point will have the features similar to that particular cluster where it lies on. In the second, I have divided my population into different factors, few are angry, few are sad and few are happy. So again, uh, in the last videos, you also had seen about the evaluation techniques. Now, for example, you are dividing your data into four or five clusters, let's say four clusters. But there may be some data points which are actually in cluster three and you are predicting it at cluster two. So again, evaluation comes into picture and this is how you will see how accurate is your model. The other features of clusters or the main features of clusters is like points in the same groups are sim as similar as possible and points in the different groups are as dissimilar as possible. So you will, when you will get a new data set, you will see how it is implemented and how clusters are made. Now, one of the techniques of clustering is the k-means clustering, where k is the number of clusters. See, a clustering algorithm tries to analyze the natural groups of data on the basis of some similarity. Now, in the machine learning workflow, in the last videos, we have seen how, what is the flow diagram? We get the data, we are preparing the test set and the training set, then creating a model using some algorithm. For example, when now we are discussing clustering, we will have the clustering algorithm. What we will get the output? The output will be the clusters of data. This will be our model. Now we will take our test data to have the accuracy of our model and then further we'll deploy it. If any of you have not seen my old videos, just give a pause to this video, go to the other videos, that is the main video was the introduction to machine learning, where I have discussed the what is the flow diagram or the how you can solve a problem using machine learning, what are the steps and what all things you should know. Here, I am just discussing the creation of the model part using just one single algorithm that is k-means. So it is very much important to go through all the videos one by one to have a good understanding of each and every topic. So the flow diagram for the k-means will be you get the raw data, you apply the clustering algorithm and then the output you will get is the clusters of data. Now when you have the output at clusters of data and you need to predict a new data point, you just have to see where in which particular cluster my data lies and you can say that particular cluster feature will be same as my data point. So this way you can predict. See, now, what are the steps for the k-means and choosing the centroid? See, k-means is a type of algorithm where we are choosing the centroid, that is the, you can say the means around which the cluster will be there. 
फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू से इन टू डी स्पेस इफ यू से इट्स अ सर्कल वट इज अ सर्कल मीन इट मीन्स फ्रॉम अ पर्टिकुलर पॉइंट द रेडियस और द डिस्टेंस फॉर ईच एंड एवरी पॉइंट इज सेम द लोकस बिकम्स अ सर्कल सिमिलरली फॉर दिस क्लस्टर द मेन सेंटर पॉइंट इज कंसिडर टू बी देंट्रॉयड वी आर कैलकुलेटिंग द डिस्टेंस ऑफ ईच एंड एवरी क्लस्टर फ्रॉम देंट्रॉयड नाउ वन इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग इज दैट दे आर वेरियस डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ डिस्टेंसेज इट इज नॉट द शॉर्टेस्ट डिस्टेंस बिटवीन द टू पॉइंट्स दे आर वेरियस डिस्टेंसेज लाइक मैन हैटन डिस्टेंस यूक्लीडियन डिस्टेंस सरवास डिस्टेंस cosine distance and many other distances even we can find the distance for the categorical variable it is not only that we have to subtract to numer- numerical numbers numerical values to get the distance so there are various formulas this distance actually represents how similar your two points are for example if you take a simple example of an of two animals if you say there are two breeds of cat and one breed of dog and if you find the distance between the various animals now the breed of cats will have a less distance that means they are more similar compared to the breed of dog this is how the distance is calculated the steps for the k means are firstly you have to prepare the data the most important part is the preparation of the data you have to get the data maybe from your database sql or mongodb whatever you are using from a csv or any type of source it may not be clean it may be messy you have to clean the data the input of the machine learning model is the cleaning of my data there are various techniques for cleaning of the data you have to analyze the data you have to finally find out what are your important features that you have to use what are the different rows or columns that have to be kept in your clean data and so on so the most important part is the data analysis and cleaning of the data then you have to decide how many clusters there are also various algorithm for considering how many clusters or if you want like you are already having a requirement you have to divide the population into two parts so again you are having hard coded as two but this is not always the case there are various factors how the cluster is decided then comes choose the initial centroid randomly you can choose any centroid of the clusters for example if you are having three clusters then there will be three different centroid three different centroid and now what you do you start assigning your data points and calculating the distance from these three centroid lesser the data it belongs to that particular cluster i'll show you how the loop works you have to iterate it till that particular point where each and every time you are getting the same clusters see i have given two diagrams here how the distance is calculated firstly in the left side you can see a diagram where there are large number of data points and we are trying to calculate which particular data will belong to which cluster and there is the diagram on the right hand side where many distances are being calculated there are various tools in the online resources where you can see in a gif mode how the distance is getting calculated If anyone needs any type of reference for it, please ping me. I'll sh- I'll give you the link for it. What is the algorithm statement for K means? Select the K points as initial centroids. Repeat. What do you have to repeat? Form the K clusters by assigning all points to the nearest centroid. Recompute the centroid, and you have to recompute until the centroid remains the same. if you want you can do with a normal pen and paper i can give you a small no, small number of data points we'll also discuss otherwise you can do, do it in the excel sheet i've done both but at least i want you like if you once do with pen and paper you get a clean understanding of the algorithm then it becomes very easy for you to implement it in python because python is having directly some packages and it'll give the output but you should know what is the logic behind that output okay detail algorithm statement is initial centroid is chosen randomly centroid is the mean of the points in the clusters closeness is measured by the distances euclidean distance manhattan distance cosine similarity i think cosine similarity we had a small discussion in the earlier videos where we had the dot product two vectors we find the dot product and that particular 
thing we had the cos term that is ab cos theta this is actually it gave the similarity between the two the dot product of two different things for example if you are having two matrices and they are having a very high distance the dot product will be high if they are having high similarity the dot product uh, if they are having similarity the dot product will be high and if they are very dissimilar the dot product will be very low so by just the magnitude of that dot product you can say how much close the two matrices are how much close those features are okay and the k means due to these all similarities it will start converging now let's see i have my data set for example these are the subject and these are the marks and i need to have some clusters based on the marks how difficult my subject is it is quite obvious like students tend to have a lesser marks in a tough subject and a e better marks in a easy subject so i just want to make clusters based on the marks just keep in mind what i have done after i got the data i have already sorted it so the data that is being represented here is a sorted data now randomly you can choose any centroid whatever you want this is a single feature and a single column right what i have done firstly i have chosen two centroid i want my data data to be divided into two parts one is easy subjects and one is hard subjects i have chosen the centroid as 55 and 90 i have also written the data set in the same slide for the ease now what i'll do with each and every point i'll calculate the distance that is subtract the value of 55 from each and every data point lesser the value it will belong to that particular cluster this becomes my iteration one see 55 68 69 is more closer to 55 than the other numbers that is 75 76 88 and so on these are more closer to 90 now i'm having my k1 and k2 that is now my two clusters are created k1 and k2 with some values now what i do i take the mean of 55 68 69 i calculate the centroid and it comes out to be 64 similarly calculate the centroid of the data points which is in k2 it comes out to be 89 now again i go back to my original data set i calculate the distances of original data set that is 55 68 69 75 and so on from 64 and calculate the new clusters create the new clusters again i come to see that my k1 becomes 55 68 69 75 76 and all the other numbers are more closer to 89 this means now i am having two clusters k1 and k2 which is having different numbers so i have to go for iteration 3 if the number of clusters or the number of the data points in iteration 1 and iteration 2 is same then we'll stop the iteration here now i'm taking the centroid or the means from the data points which i got in iteration 2 that is 55 68 69 75 and 76 I got the mean as 68.6 and from the K2 data points I got the mean as 93.5. Now once again I am calculating the distance from my original data points. But this time what I see? I see the number of data points or the data points in my iteration 2 K1 is same as my K1 iteration 3. that means this is the point where i'll stop my iteration i'll not keep on iterating so my final clusters if i decide cluster k is equal to 2 then this would be the output my first cluster will have the values as 55 68 69 75 76 and my second cluster will have the values as 88 90 92 95 97 and 99 now what i can say from this statement i can conclude these marks like 55 60 that is the k1 are my tough subjects because people are not able to score in this subject and the k2 it becomes the easy subject because people are able to score a higher marks compared to the other now one of the problem statement which i can share with you is that take cluster k is equal to 3 make three clusters so you can have a easy subject medium subject and a hard subject try it with pen and paper and see what is the difference how your model changes when you change the value of k is your model more accurate or not 
whether accuracy doesn't change or it increases the accuracy and so on. You can experiment with the different values. If you are having a small data set, we can you can do with pen and paper. And once you do with pen and paper, you get a clarity of the algorithm. Different type of distances that, to, that is calculated in these type of problems is Euclidean distance. I've written the formula Manhattan distance, Minkowski distance. And the, for the, these are all for the numerical variable. And for the Hamming distance, that is for the categorical variable, you are using the Hamming distance. For That is the formula of sigma as xi minus y, yi, absolute value sigma, that is the summation from i is equal to 1 to k. Okay. For example, you are having the values as male and female. You have to calculate the distance. Ma distance between male and male would be zero, but the distance between male and female would be a higher factor. It can be represented by any number. Again, whenever you are using the scikit-learn, whenever you are using any type of input for the machine learning model using Python, using scikit-learn package, you always need the numerical values. So it's very important to convert your categorical values into the numerical values so as the computer understands it. My scikit-learn package understands it. These are the distances, how similarity is calculated between the different data points. Now, for example, you people must be aware of the iris data set. I have taken the sample data from the iris data set. You can see I've taken uh, just some screenshots of the data. I've shared the data in my GitHub link. I have given the link at the end of the video. You can just click on it, get the code, directly run it. You can get al also get the iris data set there. Or iris data set is very easily available in the internet. It is a comma separated value where the last column or the last value is whether it is a versicolor, centosa or virginica. These are the different type of flowers. Iris is a flower and depend upon the petal and the sepal width and the height, the breed changes. So let's see how this is implemented in Python. Firstly, we are importing NumPy, Pandas and then from this table, iris.txt, we are reading the table and converting it into a Pandas data frame. Once it is in the data frame, see, I have given the names of my heading like sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width and species. I can see with the help of the head, a dot head function, what is the type of data. I can just print it. Now, you know, whenever we are doing some experiment on the training data set, we are not using the last column or the predict column that we have to predict. That is why we are dropping the species and making the species as a new. That is my x variable will be the input. That is the, all the features and my y variable would be my species. That is, we have to get the input in terms of x. That is all the factors. That is petal width, sepal width, petal height and all. Length and width. And then we have to predict what is the species. The library that is used for this k-means is k-means. That is from sklearn and cluster we are importing k-means. One of the parameters that we have to pass in the k-means is n clusters. Okay. You have to decide what are the number of clusters that you want. In this case, I have made a variable estimators where I have writing the name of the estimators is k-means iris underscore 3 underscore 8 and I have given two types of k that is cluster n clusters is equal to 3 and n cluster is equal to 8. Now, this is my full model. My model will be created now. Now what I do, I have imported the matplotlib. I I'll be displaying it in a 3D graph. So the next page shows how a 3D graph is plotted. It is a little bit of matplotlib. I have named the different axes. Just see the diagram I'll show you. In the last one, I have given the different labels, different colors. Like I am representing different clusters in different colors so that it gives a good representation. And also the end user becomes, it becomes easy for the end user just to see and depict, okay, these are my clusters and these are my values. The sample output, like I have shown only single output for n is equal to 3. You can see the output for n is equal to 8, 10 and changing the values, you see how many clusters and how they are predicting. The sample output that you will get, it will be in this form. There are three axes, that is petal width, sepal width and petal length, three different colors purple, yellow and green. 
three different labels virginica versicolor and centosa this is how cluster is created now if you get a new features you can see where it lies or what is the least distance from the centroid of these three clusters and then you can predict what particular cluster it will lie and hence which species it will belong to this is about the python implementation now one of the important factor of my experiment or my algorithm is the value of k i will be discussing one of the methods how to discuss how to calculate the value of k because you will have a huge data for example 1 lakh lines of excel sheet how will you decide k you do not know what are the different values or the different things that you need to be predicted what are the number of divisions that you need to be you need to make so we'll discuss one method how k is calculated in the previous videos we had discussed about errors what were errors errors were like what is the difference between targeted thing and the predicted thing i have given an example in my linear regression that the difference between my predicted in a particular line and the data point and when i square it and subtract it from the mean you get a point you get a value which is actually the error similarly in this case also we keep on computing the error of my values what we do we plot a graph between sum of the squared errors and the number of clusters we see with the increase in number of clusters the error keep on decreasing just think if you are having 10 data points and 10 clusters obviously your error would be zero you would have a best model 100% accurate model but increasing the number of clusters increases the complexity increases the time and finally time and complexity is the main thing in our code we have to decrease it so elbow method is a method you can see this graph you get a graph and there is a there is a point where k is equal to 4 and k is equal to 2 you can see this is this is an elbow we try to keep the k in that particular point that even after increasing the value of the k the decrease in the value of my squared errors is very less so it can be neglected so in this case we can say our k is equal to 2 or k is equal to 4 which will work this this is for my same data set that i was discussing as the last in the excel sheet which was done in pen and paper we have taken k is equal to 2 and here the elbow method again says k is equal to 2 is the best one there are many other methods we can discuss it in the further videos or any type of method you want to to be read or to understood please ping me please comment me on the comment section so that i can have the next video on that particular thing now if i discuss the real world problems or the real world examples or use cases of k means they are many i have just jotted down a few firstly document classification you can classify on the basis of the tags topics or content for example there are two books one is some spiritual book and one is some cartoon book so just by the type of words that has been printed in the book you can categorize the book so k is equal to 2 based on the feature next comes customer segmentation you can divide the customers based on their interest based on their behavior based on their income based on their what purchasing behavior and so on and and then you can customize for example you are having some e-commerce site similar to amazon and you want to have some customized offer for cust for people how would you do it firstly you have to learn what is the pattern how the person is buying the things and by seeing that you can customize the deals you can customize the offers by this way we can increase the revenue second is the identifying crime location it is based on the city locality type of people low wage people mentality of people number of crime rate in the last few years and so on next is the insurance fraud detection it has insurance a number of things like for example it can be an insurance of a healthcare automobile and many other things so there are n number of application for k means number of clusters can be made 
based on anything you want it depends on your feature it depends upon your data set it depends upon the business that you are working with and many things you can get many applications in the internet you can go to the uh, there is a page by google where it gives always the updated different type of applications that they are working with you can get a broader idea there so this is how we have discussed the kmes just with the help of pen and paper and uh, again the implementation in python i have put my code in the github along with the iris data set you can easily run it you can change the values of clusters for example you want only two clusters you want 10 clusters also you can run the elbow method by that you can find the number of what is the appropriate value of k that you should have in your data set you can go through the other methods not only elbow method they are gaussian mean methods and many other methods by which k is calculated these important parameters are very important because once you are implementing the k-means, it's just two lines of code where you have to import the k-means. But choosing the value of the k so as to increase the efficiency or the accuracy of the model becomes very important. Do watch these videos and also I would give you a suggestion that watch the videos in a sequence, sequential way. Because suddenly if you start with k-means, it becomes very difficult to understand the flow diagram. Firstly, you should go what is machine learning and then what is the flow diagram of machine learning at which particular step we have to implement the model, we have to choose the algorithm, how to choose the algorithm, whether the problem is supervised problem or my problem is unsupervised problem, these all are important before jumping into any type of algorithm that you are learning. So this is all about today. I have shared the code. This is my link. Any type of comments, any type of issues, any type of feedback, please write in the comment section. Do like the video, do share the video. Thanks for the day. Thank you.